clarity tier list for 2023 this tier list will break down into four different tier we have s tier a tier b tier and c tier the whole definition of this tier list is to give you guys a better understanding of how strong are the cleric classes in the current patch one disclaimer this is not an official tier list i can arrange some of these class based on their performance skill set as well as their white class weapon starting with the first one it's going to be priest this is a solid a tier class this class has multiple buff and debuff effects which include physical defense buff damage debuff as well as revival buff this class can also revive players in party raid content which is pretty convenient by the way because it allows players to cover the mistake and raid content while learning the mechanics step by step they can also apply apply an enormous amount of shield HP to let party members to maximize the perfection in curse effects in raid content. Moreover, this class has a Vivora effect that reduces the mass heal cooldown based on the number of overload stack for the cleric's basic healing skill. To make it even more interesting, the level 4 Vivora effects let this class send out a healing wave every 3 seconds up to 12 seconds. Next up, we have Crivix. Krivik is definitely a C tier class. Krivik class is actually pretty interesting because this class offers both damage overload attack debuff and burst effects. They have multiple skills that synergize with other classes, but one of the reasons why this class is considered a C tier because this class has a very weak skill scaling and it heavily depending on critical damage effect to do all the damage. This class has a very interesting Vibora effect which triggers powerful burst effects after applying 50 brilliant stacks on the target with either Zybus, Divine Stigmas, or Akira skills. The level 4 Vibora only gives her percent final damage to Zybus which is not as good as most people expected. Next up we have Drew class, A tier. Drew is actually a very bad in classes that are capable of dealing damage and healing at the same time. This class is very similar to Krivik, but it's way better in terms of damage over time effects, class synergy, and support. Drew of Vivora applied double damage on top of the current level of Carnivore. It's not that bad for single target damage, but it's extremely overpowered for AoE damage. The level 4 Vivora effects provide additional final damage bonuses for both Demi Human form and Wolf Spirit form. It's pretty decent, but definitely not game changing. Sadu S tier. This class has a ton of damage output, but it has a very annoying playstyle. So basically, this class lets you summon multiple shadow clones and it triggers the skill after 3 seconds. It has a very strong synergy with Demonic Sword of Giant Relic, where you can set up multiple clones and then trigger the Relic for extra rod attack bonuses and cooldown reduction effect. Side of Vivora lets you send out a powerful fireway, dealing extra damage based on the 10% of total skill factor of Enera, while providing 20% damage bonuses. Level 4 by Vora, on the other hand, give Mosca double hit effect with double the damage output for Mosca skill. Very, very, very strong. Next up, we have Ditterbite, S tier. Ditterbite is a peer support class that offers a powerful buff for end game raid content. Especially with the skill like War Tree Statue, since it can reduce enemy and bosses' critical resistance as high as 70% or more. The majority of the current endgame bosses in Trio Saber have over 20,000 critical resistance, which is extremely high by the way because it is impossible to reach enough critical rate value even if you had the best possible gears alone, well with the exception of classes that has critical rate buff. However, you do need a level 4 Vibora for Ditterbite classes to activate the reduced critical resistance effects on the War Tree statue. Other than that, many chaplain players use Ditterbite classes with level 4 Vibora to increase their fuel farming capacity with the pull effects from the War Tree statue. It is also very convenient to use Ditterbite Vibora to pull monster in British Dungeon. Oracles, A tier. Oracle class has a lot of skills that let you bypass a lot of in-game mechanics. One of the best examples would be Singularity where you have to deal with multiple crowd control attacks from other monsters and bosses. Another example is where you have to deal with crystal mechanics in Delmo Battlefield. This is pretty annoying by the way if you don't have any crowd control immunity from buff like Prophecy. Oracle is the only class that gives you plus one skill buff. This is very powerful if you play it right on certain classes like Mikos, Paladins, Lama, etc. This class can also break magic circle with counter spell ability which is pretty good for PvP content. Oracle Vibora increased damage reduction from Fortel by 5% but also apply knockback and knockdown immunity buff at the same time. The level 4 Vibora let you generate a powerful aura during damage every seconds. It looks pretty good on the outside but it is not as good as you think it is because it drains a lot of SP over time. However, it is very strong in PvP content like TBL and TGW, just not for PvE. 
Monks S tier. There are a lot of reasons why monks become an S tier class over the years. This include crowd control effect like Silent from 1H Punch, which is extremely effective in weekly boss rate content, short cooldown burst attack like Godfinger Flick, and then we have skill that can ignore defense like Palm Strike and Hand Knife. Monk has a very interesting vibrator effect that triggers a powerful shockwave that is very effective in both single target damage and AoE damage. The shockwave scales up 20% of the current level of double punch. It hit twice against 15 target, but then it hit 4 times for single target DPS. The effect has 5 second cooldown, but you can reduce the cooldown by 2 seconds when activating the Golden Bell Shield buff. Level 4 Vivora is pretty decent by the way because it adds 27.5% skill factor of the palm strike for every single strike while activating the double punch. Next up, we have Partner B tier. Partner received some buff several patches ago, but it is still not as good as any other support class. However, Descending Evil skill is by far the most interesting skill that works with class that has a lot of debuff. We're looking at Play Doctor, Drew, and Zala. This is also one of the classes that let you set up shop and sell several different class buff like priest buff and partner buff. So far, this class does not have any class Vivora, so I cannot really pin down on how strong this class can be with the Vivora effect. Coming right up, we have Paladin, A tier. Paladin by default is one of the most tankiest class with support abilities. They have skill like Conviction that can either heal or apply additional damage bonus for elemental attack. And then we have Demolition, which can be used to stun nearby enemies. Interestingly, Conviction and Demolition work so well together because Conviction has a synergy that increases Demolition damage output. The most interesting part about Paladin is that they have so many different playstyles. You can play Paladin as a sub DPS, support, or even as a healer. The only downside is that there aren't enough skill points to max out every single skill. One thing I do want to point out is that Paladin Vivora is insanely strong. It applies stone skin buff to all party members for 15 seconds and then increase their damage output by 100%. Level 4 Vivora decreased restoration healing cycle by 50%, causing the skill to heal every 1.5 seconds instead of 3 seconds. To make it even more interesting, you can actually apply SP attributes on the skill, causing the skill to restore SP instead of HP, giving you an option to have infinite mana regeneration. Chaplain's A tier. Chaplain is probably one of the best classes that can fuel farm efficiently without any crazy investment. This is the only class that can beat Buddhist Dungeon 450 and above without breaking a sweat. However, one thing I do want to point out is that Chaplain do require a ton of investment for in-game content. You're looking at advanced spell with final damage for basic attack, level 4 singles, high level crown with high level magenta and sign gem. Chaplain Vivora enable players to keep Minashio buff for 30 minutes, while the level 4 Vivora give 100% final damage to Visible Talent. Now, Visible Talent got nerfed during the Balan patch several months ago, where they kind of cut down the skill duration from 10 seconds to 5 seconds. I don't know the exact reason for this one, but overall, Chaplain is still a great class to play. Play Doctor A tier. Play Doctor is the hybrid DPS and support class that heavily depending on the Vivora class weapon. Play Dr. Vivora apply Black Death Steam and Incineration when casting Pandemic. Not only that, it also increased Pandemic range by 60% while applying other various debuff like Immobility and Panic. To make it even more powerful, Play Dr. Vivora level 4 increased the Black Death Steam final damage by 100%. So having Play Dr. Vivora completely change the class playstyle 360 degree, you will never have to apply multiple debuff to maximize out the Pandemic damage bonus. All you have to do is cast Pandemic with Play Dr. Vivora. Next up, we have Kabbalist S tier. Kabbalist is a natural HP regeneration healer, fall from any typical support that you have ever seen. The majority of Kabbalist healings are purely based on HP regeneration status, and it's extremely effective with cleric players who want to maximize out their DPS under the Guardian Saint Fates attributes. Kabbalist Vibora increased the range of the cost by a little bit, and Anagama final damage by 50%. It's pretty decent by the way, but at level 4, it's way better. Your catcher get a 10% cooldown reduction, and it also reduces the unsolved healing interval by 1 second. Basically, your catcher get a total of 50% cooldown reduction, and then receive healing every 4 seconds. 15% cooldown reduction is extremely good with high cooldown S tier class like Lama, Sadus, and Monks. Next up, we have Inquisitor, A tier. 
This is the only class that has amazing synergy with Chaplain and Exorcist. Inquisitor has a debuff that enables your character to register the attack as Devil Type only, meaning you only need to focus on Devil Type status whenever you're dealing with neutrals or any other type of monster like beasts, mutants, insects, etc. Inquisitor by Bora add one extra hit and apply outrage buffs whenever you're using the God Smash ability. It increases your character's size and reduces magic damage taken by 50%. When your characters activate Reapers, it consumes auto stack, increasing the Reaper's skill damage by 30%, and the level 4 Vivora reduced the Reaper cooldown by 25 seconds. Kanushi S tier. Mikos or Kanushi is one of the best support in the game since it offers various damage buffs like Claps, Cat Grab Dance, and Obikuchi. Obikuchi offer buffs like increased draw, physical, and magic attack, damage reduction, support status like crit rate, accuracy, and block penetration, and then we have defensive status like invasion, blocks, and critical resistance. However, these buffs are completely random. Miko Vibora reset Obikuchi when the skill does not roll for a very specific buff like honor or hope. Level 4 effects apply Kakura Dance's final damage by 4% up to 8%, or specifically increase final damage by 5% up to 10% of character channeling's attributes. Kinda complicated, but it's pretty decent in my opinion. Zealot A tier. Zealot is pretty average in terms of damage, but it is the only cleric classes that offer universal minimum crit chance buff. It is also one of the best class that can maximize our chaplain's visible tatting damage without any problem. Zealot Vivora increased emulation range by 25%, applying extra damage over time duration based on the enemy size. It also increased male armor debuff by 20 seconds. The level 4 Vivora also applied 10 additional hit for a battle skill. Exorcist A tier. Exorcist is secondary to Inquisitor in terms of AoE damage, and it is very similar to Inquisitor but way more difficult in terms of combos. Exorcist is also one of the classes that heavily depending on the Vibora class weapon, so you could say it is very similar to Play Doctor. Exorcist Vibora is a little bit complicated, so bear with me as I try to explain it. It creates a magic circle for 20 seconds, increasing holy and fire damage by 20%, and send out a powerful spear hitting 4 times, dealing damage based on 50% of Cutty Castle's skill factor per hit. Now, the most interesting part is where every time you use a holy or fire ability, it reduces the magic circle duration by 1 second. Now, if the boss or the monster walk outside of the magic circle before the sphere drop, you lose all the damage. The level 4 by Bora increased Rubik's final damage by 100%. Crusader S tier. This is by far the most broken class in the game. This class can heal and DPS at the same time. Every single Crusader skill can heal at a moderate amount. It has a dynamic passive buffs and it is also one of the best class that doesn't need Vibora class weapon. Crusader Vibora reduced Holy Smash cooldown by 5 seconds and condemned by 10 seconds. Level 4 effect apply a Holy Sword effect on top of the Holy Smash, dealing 20% of sacred total skill factor, hitting up to 10 enemies. And lastly, we have Lama's S tier. Lama is the most difficult class to play where you have to learn all the combo between punch and kicks. Many players that is new to Lama will likely to fail to remember any Lama combos in the beginning. However, Lama is one of the best class that has a ton of single target damage. Lama Vivora increased tier 2 final damage by 33%, while the level 4 Vivora increased the reset chain of searching wave by 26%. Basically, you have to activate Lama Tier 2 skill in order to reset the searching way, which is a Tier 2 skill. Anyway, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later!